Parkways at Bonington Road, that's the B7030, this is through the Roadworks area. And the Clark Manager Bridge, there's a breakdown blocking one lane westbound near, no, the Clark Manager Bridge goes from north to south, so that must be southbound, near the Kulbaggy roundabout, so it's heading sort of Glasgow bound. Um, and ferries from Gourock returning to timetable, they were suspended because of that um, unexploded mine, but they're all getting back to normal now, and that's BBC Radio Scotland Travel. Teresa, thanks very much. This is News Driver. I'm Ken MacDonald. And the time is 4.52. Let's go to the song. News at 95 FM. 810 medium wave. And on digital. BBC Radio Scotland. News and sport for the borders with Richard Gordon. Good afternoon. Local MSP is claiming drug prescriptions for children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in the borders are the highest in Scotland and more than ten times higher than the Western Isles. Conservative John Lamont describes the latest statistics as alarming, but NHS borders say the MSP doesn't appear to understand the situation. Patricia Hitchcock reports. Last year, NHS borders prescribed more than 180,000 daily doses of ADHD medication, including drugs such as Ritalin, to under-19s. This works out at 20.71 doses per 1,000 of that population, compared to a Scotland-wide average of 8 per 1,000. Mr Lamont says he accepts the use of such drugs can be appropriate in some cases, but he's questioned why the borders are so high. He's worried that young borders might be being parked on medication. He says the long-term use of such drugs can cause problems for young people, and it isn't fair to, as he puts it, hand out pills and hope the problem goes away. In response, NHS Borders claims Mr Lamont's comments display little understanding of the condition or its treatment and what the figures represent. In fact, they add, previous national reviews of ADH treatment across Scotland identify Borders Health Board as providing one of the best services for children and young people with ADHD. Dr Ashley Cameron, consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist at NHS Borders, says that the drug therapy is very effective and has a large evidence base to support its use. ScotRail's apologised after two services in the New Borders Railway had to be cancelled due to overcrowding. Passenger numbers on the Tweedbank to Edinburgh line have increased during the October holidays, according to the rail franchisee. The trains were cancelled on Wednesday and replaced by bus service, ScotRail say. Extra carriages have been added to the trains during school holidays where possible. As a result of large passenger numbers, though, some trains were delayed, and this led to the cancellation of two services with bus replacements sourced, calling at all stations. The new line was recently hailed as sort of a success. More than 125,000 journeys were made during the first month of operation. The UK's biggest livestock mart operations to be created with the takeover of the St. Boswell's based John Swan and Sons by the H and H Group. John Swans, established in 1856, operate their farm auction activities at Newtown St. Boswell's and over the border at Ruler. H and H chief executive Brian Richardson says the move shouldn't affect their 40 employees at St. Boswell's, since the company wants to build on the established team. We want to develop the sites. Uh, our sites, existing sites, are very much rural business centres, so we're bringing together other businesses on the same sites, and so we want to invest uh, in both sites, make them a focus for agriculture in the area, uh, and very much it's about throughput, getting more livestock through. Uh, it's not an easy time for farmers at the moment with, with slightly depressed prices, so we want to very much build on that. Uh, increase the throughput at the marts and uh, support farmers in marketing their livestock across the area. Revised plans have been submitted for a major housing development in Peebles. Edinburgh-based Queensbury properties already have planning consent for 13 houses and 17 flats on vacant land near Glentrest House off Innerleafen Road. Following discussion with planning officers, though, the developers now submitted a fresh application which includes an additional three affordable flats. Borderers are being invited to learn about CPR at a number of fire stations across the region tomorrow. The French Heart Foundation has provided the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service with CPR training kits used to demonstrate how and when to perform CPR on an adult or child, how to place someone in the recovery position, and also how to use the defibrillator. Samantha Seeds is what's manager with the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. The British Heart Foundation's um, ambition is, as they put it, to have a nation of lifesavers because the more people that have these basic life-saving skills, the better, obviously, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, quite a few schools have already signed up for the British Art Foundation to get some kits to provide training within schools, so ultimately we would like to be in a position for everyone can, can uh, be able to provide that uh, life-saving response should they need to. 
Well, eight of the region's five stations will be providing the training at some point tomorrow at Westland and Dunn's Coldstream and Inner Leithen. It'll be in the mornings. There's an afternoon session at Gala Shields Fire Station between 3 and 4.30 and an evening one from 6 till 8. And there are evening opportunities at Selkirk, Jedburgh and Peels. Scottish Rugby to appeal the bans handed down to Ross Ford and Johnny Gray, both forwards were suspended for three weeks after being found guilty of making a dangerous tackle in the victory over Samoa. The appeal panel can course shorten or lengthen the ban at the conclusion of the appeal. A decision should be reached before Sunday's quarter final against Australia. Yeah, now Julian Smart will bring us the Borders weather. Cloud will thicken across the borders tonight, perhaps bringing one or two light showers over the coast and hills. With light winds, it'll become chilly with the chance of some patchy fog in inland parts. Temperatures will dip to around 2 Celsius. Tomorrow, it'll be cloudy for much of the day, but mostly dry, no more than one or two light showers. And the cloud will tend to break more readily as the afternoon goes on, so allowing some sunshine to develop. Temperatures will reach around 12 Celsius. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. That's it for the moment. I'll be back with more news from the borders at half past five this afternoon. And in just a moment, we'll be rejoining News Drive. News Drive on BBC Radio Scotland. The highly contentious issue of just what Scottish MPs can and cannot vote on is set to come to a head shortly.